Now, our next speaker is Sam Harrop. Now, we all know a few things about Sam. He is an extraordinary business coach. He has extraordinary difficulty saying the word entrepreneur. <laughs> and again, a little bit like Andrea, I've had the, the extraordinary pleasure of working with Sam for the last few years. In that period of time, he's written two books, and uh, which are one about productivity, one about small business exits. Uh, I've seen him coach, I've seen him advise businesses, and he is, uh, he's an advisor that I respect enormously, and uh, there's a lot of advisors out there. I'll leave it at that. So Sam is, uh, is the real deal. Uh, I find I have very, very interesting conversations with him, and again, he's one of those kind of people that calls it the way he sees it, and I think we all need those people in our lives. Most of his clients are a little bit scared of him, Okay, that's not bad to have a little bit of fear in a coaching kind of relationship as well. But, uh, but Sam is really, he's about, I think, guiding his clients to help them discover what their businesses need to become more profitable. He's a demon when it comes to dashboards. Okay, he does dashboards on the weekend for fun. His kids have got dashboards. His dog's got a dashboard. I didn't even know what a dashboard was until I met yeah, Sam, and now Kai has explained it as well. So, uh, so Sam is here today to talk to us about selling, and the concept is, if you can't sell, how on earth are you supposed to do business? And I think it's an area where a lot of business owners are horrendously bad at selling. So let's give him a big round of applause, and uh, welcome Sam Harrop to the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. So today, rather than me giving you a list of do's and don'ts about selling, what I'd like to do is share a personal story with you about the impact a master salesman had on my life and the life of my family, and what the salesperson taught me about an empty Coke can that saved my life. By the end of my presentation today, you're going to know how the best salespeople are able to sell without selling. And by focusing on just three things, you will be able to do the same. See, without, without sales, you have no business. And as business leaders, you set the tone for the rest of your team. When you, when you set an example, the rest of your team will step up. Get sales right, your business will boom. Get it wrong, and your business will struggle. Now, if you had been with me on the 27th of April, 2007, you would have been with me just as I was waking up in my home, Johannesburg, South Africa. And my phone rang. It was a good friend, Kulia, and I answered the phone. Hey, Kulia, what's up? What? I'll be there as soon as I can. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you can't believe what you just heard? Well, this was one of those. I jumped in my car and I raced as fast as I could to a local hospital in Johannesburg, South Africa. And as I ran through reception, I saw my good friend Kolia holding her head in her hands, sobbing. And when I got to her, she looked up at me and she just said, they shot him. They shot Robbie seven times. And I was like, what, is he alive? And she turned to me and she just said, I don't know. I was shocked, I was angry, and I was completely disillusioned. I'd spent the last 34 years of my life in this country. I loved it. I loved the people. I loved the weather. I loved the business. But the crime, the crime had got out of control. Was my family or I next? And as I sat there comforting a friend that meant the world to me, the reality hit home. That could have been me. And how lucky I was to have met Jan, a master salesman for a security company, and what he had taught me about an empty Coke can that had saved me from a similar fate. Let me share with you how I met this salesman. 
In South Africa, most households subscribe to a private armed response company who respond in the event of an alarm activation or if you press a panic button. We had just bought a new house and I decided I phoned two companies to get a quote. The first company I spoke to, I spoke to the owner and he organized to come around to meet me. His name was Farney. Now, Farney was just stereotypical looking security specialist, right? This guy was built like Rambo. He proudly displayed a large pistol in his belt. And when I saw this guy, I thought, oh my goodness, this is the kind of guy, if I had to go to war, I'd want him on my side. <laughs> he was quick and efficient as he made his sales presentation to me. And he, made, he explained to me how they operated. He said, Sam, once you've activated the alarm, all you need to do is sit tight and my team and I will rescue you. He, noticed, he mentioned he noticed our large gate. Now, we had a monumental metal gate at the entrance to our house. And he said, in the event of an emergency, we may need to ram the gate off the hinges to get access. He finished up his presentation. He gave me a quote, and he was on his way. And he, or he gave me his quote. And he was, he was quick and efficient, but almost too efficient. There was a, a little bit of that he was in a hurry, or was he arrogant? I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure. And when I said to him, I said, look, I'm meeting with another security company. He was clearly disappointed. And he stated, he said, we are the best armed response company in this neighborhood. And you know what? He might have been. The second company arrived, and when this guy arrived, I looked at him, I was like, oh my goodness. Rambo, a.k.a. Finey, would have you for breakfast. His name was Jan. Now, Jan was clean-shaven, well-spoken, and quietly confident. And when he came in, he said, Sam, would it be okay if we sit down so I can find out what it truly is that you want and need, and I can offer you some different solutions? Well, to me, it sounded pretty obvious, right? I needed a personal Rambo. I needed somebody like Farney who could rescue me and my family. And this is where a good salesperson makes all the difference. Jan was fully present. He was mindful, he was aware, and he was focused. Yes, focused on me. And by being fully present, I felt I was able to build rapport with him. I had a bit of a connection. I felt like I was dealing with a friend or at least a friend of a friend, somebody I could trust to give me the right advice. And this is the first principle. You need to be present, you need to be mindful, you need to be aware, and you need to be focused on your customer. You see, to build relationships takes time, and this is where Jan really excelled. Jan asked me a series of questions to help both him and I truly understand what I wanted and needed. You see, I thought I'd wanted a personal Rambo, somebody to, keep me, somebody to rescue me. What I really wanted was for my family and I to be safe. Jan didn't spend his time with me, he invested his time with me. In other words, Jan was patient. He was curious, understanding, and helpful. He really wanted to spend or invest his time with me. What he did when he went around with me, he actually also noticed something, and that was our large gate we'd spoken about. And when he saw our gate, he actually went, Sam, there's no safety pole on your gate. See, with large gates like that, if the hinges break, the gate can fall on and actually crush and kill someone. And as soon as he mentioned it, I could have kicked myself. Why? Because when I was growing up, one of my good friends lost her younger brother when that exact same thing happened. So Jan really wanted to help me. And he asked me a series of questions, which I I've said already earlier. You know, he asked me about my electric fence, about our dogs, about our cameras. But what I didn't expect him to ask was if we ever left our two children, James and Jordan Lee, at home alone with our housekeeper, Ellen. And if we did, was she trained in CPR and emergency procedures? You see, his mission was to provide us with the safest and most secure home environment. Now... 
when he asked me all these questions, he identified a whole lot of my needs and wants. And to be quite honest, I was going into a bit of overwhelm. There were so many things to do. Can you guys relate to that? And so I was really grateful when he prescribed a solution. And that is the third point. Okay? He prescribed a solution with absolute confidence and clarity that I knew what I had to do. He explained what the next steps were how we were going to do the physical upgrades. He explained that he would immediately enroll us in the armed response service and also in the monthly training programs. The monthly training programs is where we learned what to do in emergencies, like a break-in, being held hostage, CPR, and how to read the signs. Now, we're not talking about the signs that you are familiar with here in Australia. We are talking about the signs that are used by criminals to indicate what to expect when breaking into a property. So a random piece of rubbish on your curb can indicate what they can expect. Something that's white and green, expect, easy target, expect no resistance. Red, well, this is where the Coke can comes in. See, a Coke can indicates expect resistance. Highly likely the owner is armed. But now it's the position of the Coke can that makes all the difference. See, a Coke can that is upright means that there is nobody at home. A Coke can left on its side is somebody is at home. I'm curious, which do you think is better? Upright, nobody at home, or horizontal, somebody's at home? Horizontal, somebody at home. Why? Because then they get easy access to your safe, they get access to your credit cards and PIN numbers and a getaway vehicle. The one night we'd been out for dinner as a family, and as we were driving down the road, I started to slow down to turn into our driveway when I noticed a Coke can on the curb. I immediately carried on driving and phoned the arm response company, to which they said to me, Mr. Harrop, please continue driving. We will send an arm response officer immediately. Well, when we got back, we found out that our electric fence had been tampered with. The beams in our garden had been adjusted, and the burglar bars to our main bedroom window had been completely loosened from the wall. We would not have seen them coming. Our house had been marked, and we were the targets. And if Jan had not been the master salesman he had been, the chances of me standing here today are, are unlikely. So quickly, to summarize, the three key points. One, you, want to need, you need to be present. You need to be aware and focused on your customer. Two, you need to be patient. Invest time with people. And three, you need to be able to prescribe a solution with absolute confidence and clarity. Now, remember at the beginning of my story, I told you about my friend that got shot seven times. Well, the good news is he survived. He has to be the most stubborn person I know. And he was clearly not sold on the idea of dying that day. Eight years later, he has made a complete and full recovery. And the last time I was in South Africa, I caught up with him. Because we need more businesses to become profitable and sustainable. Because when we do that, we create more certainty in our community, the nation, and the world. Go out there and make a difference and help people buy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll swap you. Thank you. you. Thanks. Wow, pretty powerful kind of a story. Is anyone ever going to look at a Coke can in the same way again? I don't think so. Can you imagine that, having to have to live with that kind of threat on a day-to-day -day basis? Quite extraordinary, really. An amazing story sends a shiver down uh, our spine. And I think, though, that it's a, it's a great way to illustrate the difference in sales and, uh, and how you know, we've got to ask better questions as part of that. I think we've got to know what we want uh, as well, which is a question that comes out of that. Do you want Rambo or do you want to make sure that your family is safe? Sometimes we get a bit too, uh, too fixed on a solution without actually kind of being clear on what the problem is beforehand. So uh, let's give Sam another round of applause. Thank you very much, mate.
And I'd just like to point out that he didn't mention the word entrepreneur once in that presentation. <laughs>